Hey, what's up guys? It's beta day. Today, iOS 13 beta 4 was released. I'm very excited about this one. Many changes inside, including some fundamental ones to the way iOS works. And to start off, I actually recovered six gigabytes of storage after updating here by doing nothing extra. It just gave me six gigs back. I don't know if you'll get the same result, but that was a nice change. So the first thing I wanted to mention is performance. This thing is so wicked fast now in iOS 13. In particular, stutters have been removed where previously they existed. For example, in the multitasking window. And a change that I forgot to mention in the last beta is that Apple has officially implemented the two times faster app launching for native applications. And with all apps closed in the background, you'll notice how disturbingly fast everything is. Everything just launches straight up right away to where you last left off. It's amazing. The speed is certainly there now, and in beta four, it's further been refined. And one of the scariest things about beta three has been fixed, well, with all earlier versions of iOS 13, where if you just keep tapping over here, you'll jump straight into your passcodes eventually, bypassing the Face ID security altogether. So if you want that patched, go ahead and update. Now on your home screen, the behavior of 3D Touch has changed. Previously, there was this weird delay and Apple has reverted it to iOS 12 era style 3D Touch where it's responsive, it works great. Also, you'll notice this new option for rearrange apps. So this is available on pretty much every 3D Touch toggle where you can click on it and your device goes into the wiggle app move mode. And with beta four on the right over here, let's take a look at that platter. You'll notice it's streamlined, a little bit smaller, more dense, a little bit sharper. I like it more, suits the devices more. Also, the order of those controls has been shifted. So for example, here, batteries on the bottom, and this is for multiple applications, not just for settings. In the App Store, you'll notice that the Updates tab, regardless of whether you have updates or not, will, will sit there static now and no longer disappears. And it's nice because you can just jump into it where it's harder to access on iOS 13 in general. Also, the fourth row of apps now, the platter opens up upwards instead of downwards. This is a behavior change I'm not sure if I like. Not as intuitive, but it is a change. Also on certain apps like Mail over here, you'll notice the icons no longer sit right next to the text they're on the right or to the right of the text. And this is for multiple apps as well. And another behavior change here, you can 3D touch on the icon and then drag it. And this isn't new to beta three, but the way it looks is a little bit different. Also 3D touch, and then you can take that card, the platter, drag it, and then drag the app icon around. And this is something you couldn't do in beta three. Now on the volume HUD, take a look behind the text. There is no longer a shadow projecting onto the apps. So it results in a cleaner looking volume interface. On the bottom, as you can see, it shadows down onto reminders, no longer does here. Reachability has also been updated. And now you can swipe and bring down the cover sheet where previously that was not an option, only to bring down the control center. Now on the music player, look at this volume bar over here. It now fills in as you drag it where previously it was always filled in. I mean, it's a better visual change for sure. In the control center, in the voice memos platter, You'll notice that the new note looking icon has been replaced with a play icon, definitely more suited towards the voice memos app. On the bottom of the widgets page, you'll notice the edit button is no longer this round circle, more suited for iOS 13. Screenshots have been improved or rather fixed. When opening them, it no longer scrunches down like it just did. It's now in a static fixed position and the screen button is now updated. In settings, when you have dark mode enabled, you'll notice the search bar is now highlighted once again. And this isn't just pertaining to settings, it's pretty much everywhere where there's a search bar kind of ghosted and disappeared in beta three. And a visual change I noticed right away that I do not like is in settings, there's more padding in between the options or the tabs in settings. As you can see, we're at the very top, yet it cuts off two extra tabs down here on beta four, which is a change just like why? And that's in general on iOS 13 beta four, the system fonts have been shrunk. So pretty much just about everywhere where text is concerned, you'll notice that it's a little bit smaller now on beta four, in notifications especially. In accessibility settings, touch settings, 3D touch is now called 3D and haptic touch. Jumping into that, you'll notice that there's a new section here for touch duration, and that's where the changes are coming in iOS 13 beta four, why you don't have to press as long for 3D touch over here on the home screen, it's instant. And if you wanna change that, go back to this behavior over here, you certainly can do that by selecting slow. In the wallpaper settings, when setting a wallpaper, now there's a very subtle animation when clicking on this middle button. Previously, it was just flash to the other option. Now there's a subtle fade in. Also in dynamic, if I jump into one of these, you'll notice the opening screen is now different. It's already presenting the little blobs and it's more zoomed in. 
So different interface for sure. A very good visual change is now in beta four, the voice record icon to send a message is no longer the same one in beta three to differentiate it from this bottom one because they were the same. In the Memoji customizer, now in iOS 13 beta four, you have an option to change the left and right ear accessories. So you can have an AirPod in just one ear and then something else in the other. Pretty cool. Now in messages, this feature now works when selecting your avatar. It's actually responsive and you can adjust the angles and all that. Previously, it did not work in beta three. In photos, you have this little icon right here which shows related photos which are not shown on this page. You can jump into it to see more. During the playback of a video, you have the option now in beta four to favorite a video and to delete it right away without waiting to pause the video. When sharing from the Photos app, there's now a revised Silky Smooth animation. Looks great. Also the share sheet interface from any application not just limited to photos has essentially been reversed. Now the icons used to have this gradient. Now it's in the background and the icons themselves are white. It's a little bit easier to discern things. And in particular, the airdrop icon over here, you couldn't really make it out before. Now it has a shadow behind it. And on the top right, the X icon has been updated to be bigger and more accessible. And if we go into the airdrop menu, you'll notice the interface here has been changed as well. It's now clean white with better spacing. Also within that share sheet, if we go to manage, there's no longer an option to disable save to files or create watch face. It's a default option now. The markup interface has been streamlined just a little bit, no longer has this bar running through it. And in contacts, the show medical ID asterisk within a contact settings has a new look now filled in. Within the health app, many new updated icons. So starting from other data and going downwards, you'll notice the icons have been refined. Every single one has a slight change in it. And uh, yeah, so I'm all for icon changes. Within activity, there's a couple new sections here in the trends tab, cardio fitness, stand minutes, and the pace is all new. In the watch application, in the app store tab, you'll notice the Apple watch has been updated and now reflects an Apple watch series four and a new screenshot. In the stocks application, some very slight spacing changes here on beta four, not as streamlined, I'd say. In the following section of the news app, down below, Discover Channels and Topics has a new look. In Apple Music, when in the lyrics view and it goes into a next song, it fades over the background coloring, no longer just an abrupt change. Also, when in this view in Music, the More Info section no longer is highlighted, this vivid pink is more muted now. In Bedtime, the bed up top is no longer amber. Man, some great changes here. In the Reminders app, the glyphs above the keyboard are no longer filled in like that. Uh, more iOS 10-esque. And the feedback app now has larger icons there to the left. Also a big bug fixed in this beta is the YouTube freezing issue. No longer do your videos hesitate. I haven't seen that issue myself and others are reporting it's been fixed. On iPads, the floating keyboard has been slightly rounded in the corners. This is before and yes, a very subtle but nice change. Also files are now shown properly within the files application from third-party sources, third-party apps, previously did not list them correctly. Also from earlier, a few things here. In Safari, if you're in the reader view or you enable it on a website with a tweet inside, it now comes formatted in this very nice interface. Previously didn't show it to you and I like that very nice touch there. iOS 13 seems to be about these very subtle, tiny touches. Another one within the Maps application, you can now see stoplights on your route. Very, very cool. I mean, I like Maps so much more. I might start using it over Google Maps more often. Also, Apple has given us a preview of Unicode 12 emojis. So all of the new emojis coming to iOS 13 sometime by the time it's released in September in one of the betas, possibly the next one will be seeing these. As you can see, there's a lot of new ones. Primarily the focus here is accessibility, handicapped, uh, blind people, prosthetics. Very cool, filling in the gap here with a bunch of new emojis. And if you guys want, I'll leave a link down below where you guys can take a look at them yourself. A lot of new animals and yeah, very cool. Also thanks to Ford, we might be getting a new truck emoji. Unknown if this would be arriving with the rest of the Unicode emojis in uh, September, but very interesting for a car company to do this. That's some new age form of advertising, but still, if it means we get more emojis, all the better. Also found in the last beta, a new method for transferring devices from your old iPhone to your new one. So it's a glyph that shows a cable connection between the iPhones, which suggests a lightning to lightning cable. Apple doesn't sell anything like this, 
but it definitely has reference to transferring data from your old phone to your new one via a cabled connection. So we'll see what happens with that one, but still no mention of it in beta four. All right, well, there it is guys. I was 13 beta four. Before I let you go, I wanted to show you the Geekbench score. So this is on the latest beta on the previous, pretty much same score, maybe the multi-core went a little bit down here. Yeah, but overall consistent. Most of the changes are happening in the UI. Removing the stutter from the app switcher has been one of the biggest changes that I've noticed. And the 3D touch is so nice. It's nice to have that behavior back now. So I'm liking where everything is going. Lots of refinements. iOS 13, I really can't wait for the release. Let's see it here. See you soon on the next one.